Adam has now learnt to communicate via a keyboard, as you've possibly noticed him racking away out there on his machine. This uh, coincided with his entry to secondary school, actually, so it set a whole new set of challenges for us. It meant we had to come up with a whole pile of new strategies so that Adam could follow the regular curriculum because it was discovered that he intellectually he was quite capable of following that regular curriculum. So that sort of meant we had to put on our thinking caps once again. Adam is now in year eight at the secondary school and he's doing very well when he works. Excuse me, pointed, pointed at him then. What, how he works in the classroom to carry out this, the regular program, he uses this little machine here, which is, as you can see, imminently portable. It's the WP600, brother, WP600 for those that are interested. He has a finger guard attached to isolate the keys. It's a word processor, which is brilliant for him because it means he can write a draft and then work on the draft without retyping everything. It uh, runs on batteries or off mains, so it's very quiet in the classroom. You, can't, you can barely hear it. It's, um, yeah, so the battery's not working. It was turned on, that's what was wrong with it. You can barely hear it. Barely hear it when it's going. Unlike a typewriter, which goes clack, 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 clack. So it's great for that. In a quiet classroom, it's amazing how loud even that can sound. <laughs> um, for maths, maths became quite a problem because Adam had demonstrated quite a degree of aptitude for maths and a love of maths. He really enjoyed it. And uh, so we had to find a way that he could do year eight maths when he couldn't speak and he couldn't write. And there's no, I mean, there's calculators, but calculators give you the answer, which probably most kids would like, they wouldn't mind that at all, but not him, no, he had liked the challenge of working things out for himself. So my husband Les came up with this great invention here, which was originally attached, but I think I like it better in two separate pieces for working with. You learn as you go along and adapt and change things. He has this board here, which has the numbers one to nine and naught, and a yes, no sign, all the mathematical signs that he's likely to need, the therefore sign, and signs that he might only use for um, half a dozen sums, you can write on in pencil and then scrub them out and put another one later so you don't use up all the spots. He's, he's got a sign that says he's finished when he's finished the sum, so you're not, you're not preempting anything, he does the whole thing. What he does is he points to, points to whatever he wants to say and he points to where he wants to put it on this grid. The grid's covered with plastic, and uh, if he's pointed to the three and he wants it there, we just write it in there with a whiteboard marker. That way he can show process, so he can demonstrate how he's done the sum. You can put any working out on the side here. Once he's finished that, we trans transcribe what's on here into his exercise book, including the working out, so the teacher can see what he's done and how he's done it. And we just scrub that off and do the next one. The only thing wrong with this system is that it's terribly, terribly slow, as you can imagine. It takes forever to get through a set of sums. So the alteration to the curriculum has been that Adam does every second sum on the left-hand side when the other kids might be doing every sum on the left-hand side. And as long as he can demonstrate that he knows how to do the sum and he understands the process, then that's okay by the teacher. As long as he knows and understands, then that's all he's after anyway.